What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to show you a new tool which is now part of AR Foundation, pre-release versions 5.0 and above. And this is really exciting because you're gonna be able to do simulations right within Unity, which is going to allow you to test things like plane detection, such as point cloud. You can also do meshing. You can also use it for session management. If you wanted to stop the session, restart your AR session. And then you can also use it for track images, which is really big because you don't have to be printing something out and having to track an image. Now you can use it right within the Unity editor. They also provide many different environments that are pretty fine for you. And you can also create your own. And if you remember, these were tools that were available in Unity Mars. Unity Mars was a pay, you know, pay component of Unity that a lot of people didn't like because they had to pay extra in addition to what they were already paying if they were using a pro version or a plus version. So in today's video, I'm going to show you what's included in this component. How do you use it in Unity? How do you install it? So let's jump into my computer and I start working on it. What I want to show you today is if you want to install this component, all you need to do is, and I already have it installed in these examples, which is the AR Foundation samples that Unity provides. And if you want to start from scratch, just go into Window and and then package manager. The version that you want to install is going to be 5.0.0 pre.12. And once you install it, you're gonna get a component very similar to what I, the one that I see right here. And you can access that by going into the XR component here and then AR Foundation, AR Environment. Once you do that, you're gonna get basically this. And it's gonna tell you here, if you click in here to import the sample environments, I already got them installed. And you can basically can toggle through each one of these by just using some of these arrows, I can go back. And they have a little, you know, not a little, they have a lot of them in here available. They have all categorized by area, backyard, bedroom, billboards, dining room. Billboards is gonna be basically for image tracking. And then there's different ones in here that you can basically go through. And I'm gonna go back to the one where I was. Go into file and then build settings and go into player settings. Then the other thing that you wanna make sure that you have installed is going to be the click on the XR plugin management. And then if you're using Windows, which is what I'm using right now, you're gonna use the XR simulation. This one is experimental because they are in pre-release state. And then obviously if you wanna to deploy to the Device, you're going to be selecting you know, the plugin provider that you're going to need either ARKit for iOS or if you're using Google Android device, it's going to be AR Core. But during development, if you're using Mac OS or, or Windows as standalone, you're going to be using the XR simulation tools. There's also additional options in here that you can use if you want to change the scan parameters, if you want to change the maximum and minimum heat distance, and how many rays per cast. So these are going to be very helpful to give you an idea of how your augmented reality you know, simulation relates to a real physical experience. So just play with some of these settings. I haven't played with all of them. I know that this environment layer as well is so that we don't have these AR environment render in the scene. So they provide, you know, a new set of layers that we can use so that we don't have a, you know, rendering in the regular camera. And then there's also for track image discovery, you can also change the interval there. And also for plane finding, there's a lot of different settings in here, which I'm not going to be covering one by one, but you guys can, you know, start experimenting with some of those. If you want to create a brand new environment, you can create a brand new environment here. What I would recommend that you do is just go ahead and edit one of them. So for instance, if we wanted to edit this one, you can either, you know, hit edit or you can duplicate it. I would say duplicate it so that you don't change the original one. And then once you duplicate it, you're going to see, you know, all the different examples in here and, and components that you can you know, you can use as an example. But the big thing here is a simulation environment. If you want to change, you know, where the camera it's going to basically it's going to start. If we go back in here, you're going to see that there's normally a camera and my camera is right here on the very back. And you can change the position when you're starting. Like if you wanted to start right here, you can basically change the starting posing here. You can see how the camera will move. It can go up and down. I can change the rotation. You can also change the camera movement, bounce. There is a default view pose and then render settings. And also if you want to exclude from selection of UI. So different settings that, again, I'm not going to be covering in a lot of detail. I'll just, you know, you can use this as an example for your own experiences. So if we go back, I want to show you the most fundamental part of AR, which is, you know, you want to create a basically do plane detection, right? So if we wanted to use plane detection, we can look at some of these examples here. The one that I want to look at is going to be the feather planes. And if you look at the XR origin component, this has the AR plane manager. And if you look at the 
plane prefab that it has. Basically, it's going to allow you to detect the plane and then it'll render some points on the plane. So if we wanted to test it, normally you will deploy, you go to file, build settings, and then build, and you wait, and you test, and you find out that there are issues in that process. So you go back, you make a tweak, and then development iteration time is really slow because we have to wait for that to happen. So instead of that, Unity provides the AR foundation simulation tools that will allow you to rapidly, you know, make changes and prototype and do a lot of those iterations a lot quicker. We can hit play and it's going to basically render the environment in, and this environment is running in, you know, in a simulation view. And I know that because I can see the simulator environment here. You can move, if I hold my right mouse click I, and move it around, I can basically look at the surroundings. I can also use W to go forward as I hold the, the right mouse click. If I hold shift as well, I can go faster. So I'm basically holding the right mouse click, I'm holding W and shift at the same time so that I can look around. And again, you can use, you know, D if you wanted to move to the right. You can, you know, the common keyboard uh, to basically move around. And if I want to go up, I can basically hit E and I'm going to go, you know, I can go up. And if I want to go down, I can, you know, hold Q. And I can also use shift if I want to, you know, do go faster. But the cool thing with this is if I wanted to do the actual plane detection, I'm going to go down here closer because this is going to be using some of the settings, the XR simulation settings to start detecting the plane. So in this case, I have planes that are detected. And let's go ahead and keep going. And I'm going to go closer to the floor. And you can see how planes are getting detected because this is a, you know, this is a flat surface. And if you look in here, the detection mode is set to everything. So I can do horizontal detection or plane or vertical detection. So let's get closer to a wall here and see if we can do detection on, you know, on a wall surface, which it is working, right? Because I have those two, you know, those two different detection modes enabled. So that's really cool. And, and the power of this comes in, you know, when you start creating track uh, components and they're called trackables. You can go in here and this is something that I couldn't do in Air Foundation when I was working with many clients. I wasn't able to see these things and this is really powerful because these are the planes that get detected and generated by the, you know, by AR Foundation. You're going to see that we have the AR Point Cloud Manager and also if I wanted to switch Point Cloud Visualization, I can basically just change it in here. If I wanted to see points in the current frame, if I wanted to see, you know, how many points I have created in total, and see that in the logger in here. But the cool thing here is I can visualize the planes, right? The actual points, right? So we can go ahead and get closer. And these are helpful so that you know, you get information about the, the surroundings. So this is another environment that also have some track images that we can use for this demo. We're tracking this image and it shows us the reference size, the detected size, and also that GUI. Let's go ahead and go back up. So if I go up, there's going to be a couple of different ones in here. So this one is another one that it tracked. So in this case, it also shows us the name of the image target. And I can go in here and look and see which, which one is that one. So in this case, you know, if you wanted to change this one to a different flower, you can see that that 3D model got positioned there. I also had another one in here that was really cool. It's wearing an a actual VR headset and we can select them and see if it is, you know, positioned correctly if you wanted to change the position of that component, then you know, you, you know, if you wanted to do something like this, then you know that you needed to rotate that object in order for you to, you know, position it perfectly in a big building. So this could be really, again, really powerful because we can test how it's going to look in a simulator environment. So if I go around and we can see, we can also start hitting and making sure that, you know, everything it's, and this is, you know, in reality, this is a real box, right? It's creating a mesh of that box. But we can test here by using our project tiles. A couple of more features of, that are supported on air simulation environments is going to be the ability to control the session. So if you look in here, we have, we can pause the session. We can resume the session. We can also reset the session. So that is going to be something that it is supported. Another thing that is supported though, is if I go back in here and we can start, let me get a little closer. And I think the settings for plane detection might be a little bit too low. Let me see if I can go back here. 
and then player settings, AR simulations. If you look at the playing finding parameters, there are different parameters in here that you can, you can look at. You can also look at the maximum hit distance and the minimum hit distance. I'm going to change this to be something like five meters. And I think on the plane, minimal plane updates, we can make this one a little bit smaller. And I think everything else looks fine. Yeah, this is better, right? Because now we can be, we're going to start capturing planes from very far away. And you can see that now I can start placing things around. And that's because I changed that value to be a lot higher. That's honestly everything that I wanted to show you today. I also recommend to look at the documentation to find out what is currently supported, which I'm going to be putting in the description of this video. Also, make sure that you download the AR Foundation samples, which is available for Get in GitHub. And I'm going to be putting that also in the description and also please subscribe and, and hit the notification bell because it's going to help me in bringing you a lot more videos about air foundation about light ship about unity mars and also all the things that i'm doing for vr so thank you very much guys